This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hey everyone, Jason Morgan, content director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. We are at Work Truck Week and we're checking in with International Trucks. They have the EMV here. It's their electric work truck. We're gonna take a walk around, get an idea of what specs are available and how it's meeting work truck vocational applications. So come along and let's see what we can learn. Okay, so we got the International EMV. Uh, it's been a while since we've checked in with the product. Can you give me an update and maybe walk me around the, the truck here? Sure. Jason, we brought our EMV tree care truck to this uh, 2023 NTEA work truck show. What we have behind us is our 210 kilowatt hour EMV. It has a range of approximately 130 to 180 miles based on driving duty cycle and temperatures, etc. Um, if you start in the front and work your way to the rear, underneath the hood, we brought a lot of the componentry that you would see on a diesel product, but may electrify it. So for instance, the power steering, the yep. HVAC, also underneath there's a lot of onboard chargers, inverters, converters, that type of thing. We do that intentionally to keep everything forward because our bodybuilders like to have clean cab to axle. Oh, for sure. Super bodies. For sure, for okay? sure. So you see a lot of commonality once the hood goes down to an MV product, that's intentional. From an operator perspective, you want them to be able to feel very little difference going from one model to the other. Sure. So interior and otherwise is basically the hood and the cab are identical except for the cluster. Okay, for sure. I'm going to walk around and get sure. the other side here too. Yeah, I'll, I'll walk with you. One of the things I would like to state is a lot of the stuff on here is built with efficiency or power reduction in mind. So if you look, for instance, on the front, it's an LED headlight, yep. low power usage, low rolling resistance tires. All that is to aid and get more range out of the vehicle. Okay, so but as we walk around, as I was saying, as we walk around, that is what you see underneath the hood. Now, we still do have a conventional radiator yep. cooling system, and that's because on the other side, we'll walk back and I'll show you, we have a battery thermal management system right. on the EMV. That is to keep the batteries at an optimal temperature. Right. You try to force charge into them when they're hot, it degrades state of health, as you're probably very much aware. Right. Same thing when it's cold, they don't like to charge, so we warm right. them up or cool them down accordingly. Right, that 70 degree-ish kind of Correct. area that they yep. like to be at, right, for sure. Underneath the, I'll say, left side mount on the, on the vehicle, this is our 12 volt. Um, Tap in point for okay, the AGMs. Sure. That's how we power the bed on the back of this. Also, uh, inside the vehicle, you, you would see the digital cluster, and we'll get that to a moment. But basically, this is a 12 volt system that is powered continuously throughout the day by the chassis batteries. Okay. So you don't have to worry about those. If we're using any load, for instance, it, this vehicle does to raise and lower the bed from 12 volt, we're constantly replenishing the 12 volt system off of the chassis batteries okay. throughout the day. As we walk our way backwards, there are two batteries under the cab, three, four, five, and six. So you can see basically there are six batteries. We call it a two string, six battery system, totaling 210 kilowatt hours of power. Okay. okay. In front of the rear axle is the S box, which is a distribution center and an HVDU. And I'll talk about why that HVDU is important here in a moment. What it, the S box does is it takes the power from the batteries and either distributes it forward to the devices we just looked at underneath the hood right. or rearward to our pusher motor setup that we have on this vehicle. Right. The HVDU, what's important about it is we brought out at this show an EPTO. We're also going to be bringing out what we call an e-power tap point. Those are additional ways to integrate a body. This particular body is done via a 12-volt that runs this rugby top of rail system to okay. articulate the bed. In the future, we now have a PTO that is a uh, variable frequency drive motor that has an SAEB flange on it, and we can supply 40 kilowatts, approximately 55 horsepower continuous, okay. or 60 kilowatts, about 80 horsepower peak. Okay. 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 The drive motor is all the way back here. Yeah, the drive motor is in the rear. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, what's the motor? It's a Dana TM4 okay. motor. Yep. And that has been in service for a couple of decades in various industrial applications. Yep. So we chose that. It's very reliable. Uh, it was quick to market. It's very similar to a diesel pusher setup on, that you see on school buses and some other applications. So we tie in with the short prop shaft into a differential. And then this is an air chassis only. 
okay. system. So it's got a IROS International Ride Optimized Suspension, and you know it has air tanks and an air compressor. That's one of the small pieces of the maintenance that you've got to do on the vehicle in the first five years. The only thing you got to do is change the coolant system fluid, and also on the compressor on the other side, there's a there's a filter that is needed, and the, and that filter has an annual change cycle yeah so and so since the motor's back there it's just a regular axle right i mean we're not talking oh, about yeah, an electric no, that, axle that's a drive motor so that would be familiar to people that getting into this correct this is a standard dana axle okay okay 23k rear axle 21k suspension so that's how you get the gvwr rating of 33 nice. on this vehicle this is the s box that we were talking about this is where all the power comes to below that is the hvdu that we were talking to in regards to being able to provide bodybuilder power in the right. future whether it be an epto or just a uh, an outlet to be able to grab power now our batteries do run at 608 volts mm -hmm. so you know if your system runs to something else you've got to you know do uh, power conversion sure to, to get to the correct voltage but we can supply uh, per the EPTO she's 20 kilowatts of power on the e-power system and then on the EPTO as I stated 40 kilowatts continuous okay. power and you said I, I noticed too, since you got the batteries in the frame rails but I know you mentioned earlier for upfitting they like frame rails to axle like how do you balance that decision of, of protecting them and putting them in the frame rails but still getting upfitters where they need to be on the on the frame we, we we have a mix of upfitter situations you know not everybody's the same based on the body they're putting on the vehicle so it, when we brought this to market originally it was going to be a dry van application so you just got right. straight rails nothing hanging down over the side but we quickly realized and pivoted towards dump bodies small stake beds things of that nature and then ultimately got to the utility trucks right right and the utility trucks we just had to work with the bodybuilder and provide a louvered cover maybe give up some toolbox applications Applicability on that side of the vehicle that type of thing it, it's all stuff that between the dealer the bodybuilder and us we can accommodate if you if you I tell see. us what you want to do we are uh, you know one of the things on electric vehicles is your, I call it component lock you can see everything's pretty tightly packaged yeah so until we get some smaller componentry this this space is changing very quickly yeah. when we get smaller batteries with different chemistry and more kilowatt hour capacity we'll be able to move everything forward get shorter wheelbases um as i said the back right now the af is the shortest we can get that is 77 inches which is pusher configuration okay well so yeah i mean because we're, we're here at work truck show we're hearing a lot about evs can we slow down back up a little bit sure. and kind of walk me through epto and epto options i mean we're seeing a lot of different options here uh let's start with this so epto the electric power takeoff is that coming off the uh, battery packs that are there on the frame rail is this a separate system how does that work on our particular system that we've tied in it is coming off of the chassis battery okay so whatever your load duty cycle is is going to diminish your range okay okay there are third-party solutions we've worked with those as well you've probably seen the terex utility bucket truck that's out there it has a viatech third-party okay system on it it's a scalable system they use a 288 it is also here at the show this okay. year um, you go over and see that that enables the body to be ran throughout the day and not diminish from your range of your vehicle okay. okay it does come at a cost and weight penalty sure um which you know weight on these emvs everybody's critical of right. because they are running heavier than a conventional combustion engine right. product right well and i'm guessing i mean some of the integrating coming from oem there's probably warranty uh solutions there and benefits and, and other things the standard that... two-year warranty okay. uh on the chassis just like an mv has okay um and then the battery the all the electrical wiring and the motor have a five-year 100,000 mile warranty okay we also have extended warranty contracts that you can purchase to you know if you're not comfortable looking over oh, I've heard battery seven to ten years we will customize a plan for whatever you would like okay okay yep one thing I would like to say is we've got a lot of these vehicles out in the field we've probably got about 40 that have been delivered to users and are being in use in the country we've got approaching well over 100 units that are on order and in various stages of being delivered we're collecting telematics data yeah we're seeing anywhere between from a range perspective 1.2 to 1.8 kilowatt hours per mile is okay. the usage and again okay. that's driving <laughs> temperature no, yeah i mean it's, you're, it's equivalent to fuel mileage i know i know like it makes <laughs> sense to some degree but you're already a little bit ahead of me because i think the idea of a of battery 
energy efficiency, I'm still a little bit um, behind on there, you know, because it is a lot like fuel, but think about right. it in that way. Going back real quickly, and I know this might be a little difficult to answer given all the different uh, body applications and EPTO, but do you have an idea for maybe something like a dump, how much that would impact range in a typical duty cycle? What should I plan for if I'm going to use the EPTO in terms you, of you how could, it impacts On a range? dump truck, it's going to really depend on how many cycles throughout the day. Right. What we're hearing is between 10 and 15 kilowatts of power, okay. kilowatt hours of power is what they need throughout the day okay. to run. Again, you only need to power up. Gravity brings it back down in most cases. Yeah. And, and in, in a lot of cases, it's 10 to 15 cycles of the bed in okay. an 8 to 10 hour shift. I mean, is that a, so uh, trying to do some terrible quick math as an editor too, is that about 10 miles? 10 yeah, to, yeah, you 10 probably to decrease the range. Miles we say ish. 135 miles of reliable range. And, okay. and that's averaging at the 1.5 kilowatt hour per mile. Okay. If you know, using that same, I'll say, fuel economy or range economy right. number, you would probably degrade your range down to the 110 to 120 mile range. Okay. Okay. That's not a significant drop. Well, and to your point, it's not. It's not so much that you're, you're losing range because you're producing uh, productivity because you're running your duty cycles, right? right? So it's more just how are you managing your energy usage throughout your duty cycle versus. Oh, this is my range, and the, you know what I mean. Once yeah, that's, you, once, that's a great once you start point. Everything your is head about energy it. usage. Yeah, everything yeah. that you do on the vehicle, whether it's going down the road and you know making the tires rotate, or whether you're doing work with a body, all that requires power, right. and that power in this case just comes from the batteries. On a traditional combustion engine product, you're using diesel fuel, yep. and and doing the same thing. Right. Uh, okay, lastly, uh, how can how can fleets get involved with you? What's the next step to even get their hands on a on a truck or, or start talking about how it fits our application? Please give us a call, get a hold of your local dealer. We have a team in, in Lyle and Rochester Hills that Kevin Holland leads up yep. that we do the simulation and the consulting services. We do want to work with you, have a good experience with the vehicle. Electric vehicles, it's very important to not only understand the vehicle, but the charging and the infrastructure behind that. Yep. You can have a bad experience with the vehicle because the other things in front of it that enable the vehicle to run right. were not done correctly. Right. We've found that over the three years of doing this journey with bus and truck that it, it's all important and that's why we set up a consulting system that walks the user and through the entire process. Right. We can tell them pretty accurately with simulation data, whether they're using a the telematics product today, we can take that data simulated, we can tell them pretty accurately whether the vehicle will fit oh, good. today, what they are doing today. And we'll right. be honest with them and say, hey, if it doesn't, you know, we've got things in the product pipeline in two to four years where battery chemistries are changing, we're right. going to get more capacity out right. of a smaller package. Right. It'll enable shorter wheelbases, right. longer ranges, more duty cycle on body applications. Right. All those things are in the, in the, in the works. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much for taking the time. Appreciate it. All right. It. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it.